And freeze. Now, did you hear what I was saying? Clearly enough that you could say, write it down in the comments. If so, you just experienced a phenomenon called the cocktail party effect, where you can hear me while there's people talking right next to us and there's a jazz band playing across the room. This is because of selective attention. It's our ability to focus on one particular thing while tuning out to our surroundings. And it's the same effect that allows us to separate the vocals from the background music in a song. This comes so naturally to us, but machines find these tasks extremely difficult. To a machine, a voice singing is just another track that isn't easily discernible from the piano track or the violin track or the guitar track. So how do you train a machine to separate voices at a party or vocals from a song like people can? Well, the answer lies in algorithms and lots of data. Recently, researchers developed an algorithm that can identify the vocals in multiple songs. And this is thanks to breakthroughs in machine learning, a method used by artificial intelligence to allow machines to learn by analyzing data. To do so, researchers used a deep neural network. These networks are software inspired by how our brain works. They can learn using a method called deep learning, a kind of machine learning technique that works through a series of layers an input layer, an output layer, and middle hidden layers. These hidden layers are where the magic happens. And to train an artificial neural network, you have to feed them a ton of data. Just like us, the more they know, the better they learn. So researchers trained their neural network by giving it 50 songs. They let the neural network try to separate the vocals and the non-vocal components, the other instruments, and compare its results with the correct answer, which is that particular song already separated into the different components. Every time the neural network gets closer to the correct result, it's rewarded. So it improves with each run. It was then tested with 13 new songs, and it correctly separated the vocals from the background music in each one. It taught itself to tell the vocals apart from the other instruments. What separates deep learning from previous types of machine learning is this layered structure, which is modeled specifically after the cortex, this wrinkly outer layer of the brain. And it's the part that's responsible for higher order brain function, like sensory perception, cognition, spatial reasoning, and language. Basically, it's the part that makes you different from a lizard. It's made up of six layers, and different aspects of processing happen at each level. When you first see an apple, the first layer might identify the color red. The second detects the round edges and so on, until finally the last layer puts it all together and says, hey, this is an apple. Deep learning software tries to imitate this hierarchical structure of neurons in the cortex. The first few layers of a deep neural network learn to identify simple patterns, like single unit sounds. The next layers learn to recognize more complicated patterns, like words. Eventually, the result is that extremely complicated patterns, like the entire vocals of a song, can be recognized and distinguished from other instruments. And this layered process is at the heart of deep learning success, starting with simple ideas and making them become more and more like a generalized concept seems to capture something fundamental about intelligence. In 2015, a deep neural network beat a human at image recognition for the first time. This means we're able to make better and more sophisticated machines that can master tasks we thought were unique to humans. Machines are helping doctors make better diagnoses, and robots are learning to cook by watching YouTube videos. And when a robot can learn to cook by watching YouTube videos, that makes you question what it really means to be human. <laughs> this is olive flavored 
coconut water and it's really disgusting. Uh, at my cocktail party at the beginning of this episode, you heard a few voices. One of them uh, was Danielle, who is the host of Origins of Everything. It's a new PBS show on history where they explore the origins of, of many, not quite everything yet, but many things. There's a link to that in the description. There was also Jade from the channel Up and Adam who wrote this episode. So you can check out her channel as well. I'll put the links down in the description. Thank you. <laughs>